Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our shop menu. In the prior video, we added some different things to our menu, such as labels, image labels, and text buttons. And this time, what we're going to do is whenever a player clicks on a buy button, they're going to receive that tool. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to open up the shop here. And let's say I want to buy a green ball. Then I'll go ahead and just click on the buy button down here. And when I do that, it gives the player the green ball. And I can do the same thing for the other items. So depending on whichever tool I buy, it gives it to the player. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is show you what you have to add to the game and then we'll take a look at the script. So firstly, under the replicated storage over here, this is where you're gonna be putting the different tools. And while I'm showing you this with very simple tools, just basic shapes, you can do this with whatever tools you want. And make sure for whatever tools that you're using, it has a part called handle. Also inside of replicated storage, we're going to need a remote event. There's a couple scripts we're going to be adding, but first we're going to start under the local script that we've been working on. So far what we have for the script is a couple different functions that do some different things. One of our functions opens up the shop whenever the player touches the part in front of it. This function right here closes the shop whenever the player clicks on the X button. And down here we have a couple different functions that go along with the different buy buttons. Before we just did a simple print message that said bought item 1, bought item 2, and bought item 3. And so what we're going to do in this video is clear that out and write something different inside of these functions. So what we're going to be doing is sending information from the client side, which is like the player side, to the server side. So to do that we're going to need remote events. So the first thing we're going to do at the top here is reference the replicated storage and also the remote event. We're going to do that by saying local replicated storage. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. Next, we're going to create a variable for the remote event. So we're going to do that by saying local remote event. And this is going to be equal to replicated storage since that's where it's stored. Colon and then wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put remote event. After that, we're going to start working on our functions down here. So let's go and start with the first function. First, we're going to say local tool is equal to replicated storage dot tool one. After that, we're going to say remote event colon fire server. And then we're going to pass that tool. So basically what we're doing on the client side, they're going to be saying, I want to buy this tool. And then what we're going to be doing is taking that tool and sending it to the server side. And then on the server side, we'll be checking to see if they have enough money and then giving it to the player. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our other functions. So I'm just going to copy this line right here and we'll paste it inside the other functions. This time we're going to change the second one to tool two and the third one to tool three. If your tools have a different name, then you'll just put the different name right here. So basically what these are doing, it's creating a variable for the tool by looking under replicated storage and then referencing the name of the tool. And then after that, it's going to be sending that information to the server. So now that we have the client side done, let's go and take a look and see what we have to do on the server side. For the server side, we're going to be adding a script under the server script service. And since we're doing stuff with remote events, we're going to start by adding those two lines that we did in the local script. So what I'm going to do is just hop over to this script and copy those two lines. Okay, and just remember from before, the first one is a variable for the replicated storage, and the second one is a variable for the remote event. At first, we're not going to worry about the money side of it. We're just going to do whenever the player clicks on the button, we're going to give them that item. So what we'll do first is we'll define a function. We'll say local function, and we can call this function by tool. Inside the parentheses are going to be parameters that come from the remote event getting fired. It gives us player automatically, and this is the player that triggered the remote event. And then we also pass tool, so we can add that right here. This tool right here comes from the local script when we did this line right here. What we're going to do first is just take a look at the values that are being stored in those two different parameters by saying print player, and then print tool. And the last thing we need to do is run this function whenever the remote event gets fired. And we can do that by saying remote event dot on server event 
and then colon connect and then the name of our function which is by tool okay so what's happening is whenever that player clicks the button it's going to be sending the tool information to the server and then on the server side what we're doing first is just printing off the values that get sent to it so let's go ahead and run the code and take a look okay so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the shop and then I'll open up the output so when I click on this first button here it gives me my player's name which is the value that was stored under the player variable and it also gives me tool one which is the value that's stored under tool so this is going to be useful because we need to know which player to give the tool to and we also need to know which tool to give to the player so now that we know what's stored in those two different parameters whenever the event gets fired let's go and work on giving the player that tool to do that we're going to get rid of the print statements and put something else in its place and we're going to start by saying local give tool and this is going to be equal to replicated storage and then it's going to be square bracket tool which gets passed to us from the client and from the tool we're going to get its name and then we're going to put colon and then clone so what this is doing is looking under the replicated storage for the particular tool and then it's going to be making a copy of it that we can give to the player and the way we give it to the player is by saying give tool dot parent and we're going to be setting this equal to player dot backpack and then don't forget for the clone part we'll need parentheses okay so you can see we're using those two different parameters we're using tool to find that tool in the replicated storage the reason we're using tool dot name is because that's a string that it can use to look in replicated storage whereas this tool up here is an object so we're saying tool dot name we're looking in the replicated storage once we find it we're going to make a copy of it and then we're going to take that tool and set its parent which is basically just sending it to a different location within the explorer menu and that new location is going to be the player and this player is whichever player clicks on the buy button and we're going to be shipping that to the player's backpack now let's go ahead and run the game and take a look okay so I'll go ahead and open up the shop menu and now if I buy a tool then it shows up down here at the bottom let's go ahead and check the other tool so if I buy the second one and the third one it looks like they all show up down here. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, we're going to set up a currency system so that we can assign prices to the different items. I hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for the next one.